<clears throat> so with this presentation, I'm hoping to wrap up the state of Connecticut. Um, Connecticut has more chapter issues than all of New England, all the rest of New England combined. So uh, it's pretty crazy. And um, so this is going to be a little longer than the last presentation. Um, just as an intro on Roy Weatherby, I was a Blue Book Regional ed Editor for uh, New England, which was Region 1. I was uh, the Area VP and the Region VP for a while. Um, <clears throat> I I'm a Path Lodge Advisor at Package Lodge 525, and I'm currently Advancement Chairman for uh, Troop 114 Shrewsbury. I've been collecting since 1977 when I attended my first Jamboree, and I traded for one of those neckerchiefs that Joe showed. And I've been focused on New England OA since uh, Rob Cutts published his uh, book back in 1987. Um, <clears throat> we did look at most of Northeastern Connecticut uh, last time. Um, I've highlighted El Jixon because it is just the uh, most prolific issuer of patches of any chapter in the region. And I just didn't get it all into the last presentation. So we'll lead off with the Jixon chapter and then we'll move on to the rest of Connecticut. Um, and uh, the listing in blue book for El Jixon chapter starts with jacket patches. So I'm gonna start with jacket patches in the presentation here as well. Here's just kind of a mosaic of most of them. Turns out that there's still um, at least one El Jixon jacket patch that I've learned of that I do not have. Um, and, you know, some of these are, are just exceptionally scarce. Um, so we'll go through it and I'll, I'll comment as I go. Um, this chapter started in the mid 70s issuing patches and um, the very last issue from this chapter that I'm aware of uh, was for the 2000 NOAC. So they issued a lot of stuff over the years, but they were most involved in the uh, in the late 1970s. So the first jacket patch, um, J1, uh, it's very similar to a couple of the other uh, section jacket patches that we saw in the previous presentation. Um, these were made by Howardson in the Far East, so they have that kind of uneven, um, kind of funky, what we call Asian lettering. Um, it's on a white twill standard six inch round size. Um, not the scarcest of all these neckerchiefs, but not one you see very often. Uh, this one you do see a little more often. Uh, it's listed as a J2. Um, I will be honest, as um, these were being listed, they're more likely to have been listed in the order that they were discovered, as opposed to the order that they were issued. Because again, this was a small chapter that issued a lot of stuff, not all of it dated. Um, very um, likely that this was issued for an event and they simply didn't date it. But this is the J2 um, of the jacket patches from this chapter, it's on the easier side. Um, J3, um, this again appears to have been an event held at Lake of Isles Scout Reservation, now a casino. Um, and again, this jacket patch isn't um, as tough as some of the others. Okay, so J4 is a, is a six inch round with hanging feathers. Um, and a lot of these <clears throat> patches were issued in sets. There, there'll be small versions and then jacket, pat ver jacket patch versions of these patches. Um, somewhere in time sounds like it was a theme, maybe a fellowship theme. Again, it was held at Lake of Isle Scout Reservation, um, but because it's not dated, um, you know, we can't place it specifically in time. Um, J5 and J6, these are the rarest. These are the hardest to come by. Um, El, Jick El Jickson Chapter J5, it's about an eight inch tall. I have the ruler in there with the J6 because this thing is like 12 inches tall. It's huge. Um, the J5, um, I picked this up trading back in 1992 and I've never seen another one. So um, I consider this certainly among the rarest. And then of all the jacket patches in my collection, J6 here, this, this giant one um, was 
the very last one that I added to my collection. So it was the hardest for me to find. Um, I have seen one other since then. So, um, you know, it's at least twice as common as a J5. Uh, and what's really odd here, and for a long time it was listed, the WWWs are just unfortunately close to the name of the, uh, the chapter that's on the bonnet here. So a lot of people would read this as well Jixon chapter, um, but it's not. You can, you can see that it's really the three Ws are there. Um, one note about these patches, because they're all Asian made on something, um, you know, not on a Swiss loom, but on, uh, on like hand looms, they tend to be um, different. Everyone seems to be a little bit different than the next one made. And I'll show some examples of that going back in time, but I'm sure if I found another one of the J5s, there would be differences in it. Um, I have seen some differences in the J6, and I've seen differences in most of the other patches as well. Um, J7, uh, this one is nicely dated, 1982, which was their 10th anniversary. This was part of a, of a much larger set of things that they issued for their 10th anniversary. And I'll try to show most of those later in the presentation. Um, this is actually a very nice jacket patch. Um, again, it tends, I mean, all of these chapter issues are obscure. Uh, this does tend to turn up a little more often than, than the others. And then moving on to J8 and what we would call J9. Um, J8 was listed in Blue Book. Uh, it is kind of Swiss embroidered. Um, it's got a horizontal embroidered background. It looks like at some point they reordered. And when they reordered, the factory came back with a computer designed version of the same patch. So the computer design version has that diagonal kind of segmentation going on in the background. And all of the details are just very much um, sharper. Uh, because with the computer designed machines, you're able to do that. Um, I think I had heard someone describe these, however, as like thick patches and thin patches. The computer design patches just happen to feel thinner and, and be thinner than the uh, earlier uh, types of embroidery. Um, this reorder, um, it was discovered after the last Blue Book uh, publication. Uh, though I, I'm quite sure that these date to the 1980s, though possibly into the 1990s. And then there's this one. And um, it's still, uh, this is Connecticut Rivers as opposed to Long Rivers. So we do know that this L. Jackson chapter was Shatani Lodge, not, not Elowak Lodge. Um, and that means that... Um, it has to be 1997 or later. So, um, and again, it's about a six, seven inch tall jacket patch. I do not have it in my collection. So, um, you know, I had downloaded and saved this image from the internet a long time ago. Um, but that's a need if anyone happens to, to come across one and it does have the lodge number on there, but not the lodge name. So now looking at some of the smaller patches. And again, this larger design um, was used for one of the jacket patches. Um, this is listed as R1. It didn't have a date to, to make it an event. Though again, I think it was probably a fellowship patch. Um, it was held at Lake of Isle Scout Reservation. Um, these two I keep in my collection as examples of how things differ. It's a it's a lighter blue background. Um, the lettering is a little taller in this one, a little smaller in this one. Just all those little, little minor differences you get when different people are making them on different machines. Um, so there's an example. And I'm sure if I found a third one, it would be different still. Um, so I'm not suggesting that anyone would ever want to try to collect all of those, but I like to keep like two examples to show these types of differences. So again, here's a case where the, uh, the R2, um, which has the hanging feathers, um, again, there's a version with a much lighter blue background, uh, lighter blue background than the other one. 
Um, but here I blew up some of the lettering just to show how some of the differences can, can be. You can see like the X is much thinner in one, the I, the, the lettering is just uneven across the board. And again, this was really indicative of that kind of what we call Chinese or Taiwanese embroidery that Howardson was known for at the time. Uh, here you can see that this red element goes up to the top of the G where this red element on the other one doesn't even touch the G. So again, every single one of these patches is a tiny bit different. Um, and again, if I find two that are different enough to show things like that, I'll just keep them. Uh, and then uh, L. Jackson chapter X1, um, it's an oval. Uh, in this case, um, and, and with some of the other patches as well, we find them both with a loop and without a loop. And um, I've seen cases where the loop was cut off. I've also seen cases where very clearly no loop was ever sewn on. So uh, that suggests to me that maybe the ones with loops were participation versions and the ones without loops were extras that you could buy uh, at or after the event. Um, and again, you know, minor differences if you take a very close look at any particular element. Um, but in this case, really the loop and no loop is uh, the minor variety that I'm tracking. <clears throat> and then X2 is this dome. And it's their 10th anniversary dome. Um, I have it blown up here on the left, but I'm showing it again to the right next to that six inch round jacket patch, just to show you how truly huge this pocket hanger patch is. Um, pretty big. Um, haven't, um, haven't found any varieties on the jacket patch, though I, I do have a dupe. Um, but again, any of these patches, if you look at them close enough, you'll find little things. And so here's a good case. Um, in 1977, they had a fellowship. Um, I have two patches and they're both different in various ways. So there's like a, a dark green with the 1977 here, there's a light green here. And again, you could look at any of the lettering or any of the elements, the details on the turtle shell are much different on each of these. So again, everyone's gonna be a little bit different. Um, so this is just a good example, 1977. Uh, and it's very clearly a fellowship. So it's listed as an EX and not as an X. Um, so moving on, uh, later in 1977, they had a visual weekend. Uh, and again, um, you find differences. Here's a case where I actually found one where all the lettering and the, uh, the emblem is white. And on this other one, it's pale yellow. Um, and then there are other differences that you can see if you look closely. Um, so on the next one, I just blew it up there and you can see the white versus pale yellow, but also just uh, the variations in the lettering that you see. Because again, um, in China, each character is, you know, like a character. They, they apparently didn't have um, like standard English fonts for the patches, and they treated each letter as a character like they would if they were embroidering Chinese. Um, so again, everyone's a little bit different. Uh, 1978, their first event was a spring weekend, and they had this um, rectangular shaped patch. It's about four inches tall. Um, I don't have a dupe, so I haven't had the opportunity to look for variations in this one. Uh, though I expect there are. Um, so this is what they issued first in 1978. They went a little crazy in 78, as you'll see. Um, and then they had their vigil fall weekend. Uh, <clears throat> and again, this had versions with both uh, loops and no loops. Um, and again, if you look close enough, you'll see other differences and variations as well. Um, but that was the event patch for their vigil fall weekend later in 1978. Um, and then, so that's the, the EX, the varieties. And then there was a jacket patch that went with it. 
And while I'm not showing them here, I found varieties where the, the lettering is either dark blue or light blue. Uh, the water is either light blue or very pale light blue. Um, so again, um, variations in the construction of the patch itself. Um, you can see that this is probably a, a three by four inch oval. So you can tell that that jacket patch is pretty huge. And then moving on to their 10th anniversary in 1982, um, they went um, a little crazy for their anniversary as well. So they had their 10th anniversary bank banquet, which was their first event in 1982. Later, they had a fellowship weekend, a 10th anniversary weekend. So that's the uh, EX 1982-2. We had already seen, and we had earlier seen the 10th anniversary dome and the 10th anniversary jacket patch. So that's part of a larger uh, series in 1982. Uh, and then these are undated, but pretty clearly a friendship reunion or a spring weekend. Um, they're pretty clearly event patches, but because they're not dated, we can't pin them down to a specific year. Um, again, this spring weekend patches is really the size of a jacket patch. And it's just very odd. It got listed as an X just because it had that pocket loop. Um, if it hadn't had that pocket loop, I think people would look at that and say, that's a jacket patch. Um, this you see turn up fairly often. Uh, neither of these is particularly uh, difficult. And now looking at the these year sets that they have. Um, so for 1977, we'd already looked at a couple of varieties of fellowship patch. And then this neckerchief turned up. So 1977 fellowship neckerchief. And this turned up at a tradery just three months ago. I had never seen it. I had never heard of it. Nobody I spoke to had ever seen it or heard of it. And it turned up at a tradery auction uh, back in March. Um, pretty crazy. And that that's where I got the uh, the idea for the two minute, um, because, you know, here's here's a neckerchief that went like 45 years having been undiscovered. Um, Howard T. Perry, I did a little bit of research. I did find his obituary and he was heavily involved in scouting and the Order of the Arrow and this chapter. Um, I do not know uh, what his role was in the chapter. I don't know if he was advisor or or what the deal was. So I'm not really sure why his name was on this neckerchief, um, uh, but it was. Um, so, you know, perhaps this is a one-off that was made just for him. Maybe he was the person that placed the order for Howardson and Howard Ang, you know, did, did him a favor. Uh, I really don't know. Um, but again, it just, it went undiscovered until this person's estate turned uh, turned up. So moving on to 78, and I said in 1978, they went crazy. Um, you can see variations in the jacket patch. We had already seen variations in the pocket patch. And this is another one, 1978 Vigil Weekend Neckerchief, um, undiscovered for 45 years. And, um, you know, that's just, uh, that's just crazy. Um, so again, uh, Super stoked to uh, to get this and add it to the collection. Um, there's also a hat pin, and unfortunately, there's a, a bit of glare there because it's in the original wrapping, so you can't really see it. But you can imagine that it's the same design as all these other pieces. And then here we are just matching up sets. So the rounds and jacket patches tended to be matched up in sets, um, again, suggesting that these were events. And um, they just didn't get dated. Um, here we are, the totem pole design. So the jacket patch was round, and it had a round hat pin uh, that matched the design. And then the pocket patches were ovals, for whatever reason. And then their 10th anniversary, we saw the, uh, the big jacket patch. And then we had the dome. We have the banquet. We had the, uh, the anniversary weekend. There's also a 10th anniversary hat pin, which I do not have. So if anyone runs across this pin, uh, I would love to pick that up for my collection. Um, they had a wooden nip nickel. And, and, you know, it's totally possible that they had more stuff and we just haven't discovered it yet. Um, like I said, this lodge just loved issuing stuff. 
Um, so the very latest stuff that I um, have seen uh, were these patches that were trading at the 2000 NOAC. Um, I haven't seen anything else from this chapter since 2000. Um, and I don't believe uh, this chapter currently exists. So I don't know exactly when um, it may have changed its name or, or merged or whatever. But these are the very latest pieces um, that we have seen from this chapter. And I'll just wrap it up with some odds and ends. So um, they had in the same lot as those neckerchiefs, uh, there were bu belt buckles I had seen before, uh, a keychain, and then there was like a paperweight of the same design and like a challenge coin of the same design. And I suspect the challenge coin was perhaps just left over from having made keychains um, because they're exactly the same other than having been drilled out. Um, all of these pieces are apparently solid pewter. They have the solid pewter uh, marking on the back of them. And then last but not least, I have these segments that turned up in Connecticut in the same area as this chapter. It's in the same style of all the other patches. I suspect that these were um, ordeals. So they ran a May ordeal in 1985. They had an August ordeal in 1985. Um, I haven't found anybody that could prove that. Um, but I think it's highly likely that this is also from L. Jackson chapter as well. And that should close the book on the most prolific OA chapter in New England. To wrap up Connecticut, we're going we're gonna to move through uh, southwestern Connecticut lodges. Uh, southwestern Connecticut has three active lodges. Atchewan Natopolis 427, which is a one-town council. They have no chapters. And Pagasset Lodge 553 has five towns and no chapters. Um, these two lodges are fortunately small enough. Um, they don't have any chapters to worry about. So, of course, what's left is Owen Eco Lodge 313. They chartered in 1998 from the merger of Tankatiki 313 and Arcoon 369. And uh, as we saw in the previous presentation, um, when you have mergers, you quite often have the formation of chapters as a result. So um, you'll see some of these names pop up. Chief Pomperab Lodge was a predecessor. Um, Wangung's Lodge was a predecessor. So we'll move right into Southwestern Connecticut. And these are the chapters uh, in Southwestern Connecticut um, that have issued patches um, that we know of, um, all listed alphabetically. And I'll, I'll run through these. And fortunately, a lot of these were small or short-lived uh, and there are possibly other chapters that just never issued anything. So we'll jump right into Achawan chapter of Owen Eagle 313. And um, they have an X1. And then this particular district event patch is also attributed to them. Um, unlikely that the chapter issued it, but they participated in this in supporting this district event. Uh, and we see that quite often with both lodges and chapters. So that's it for Achawang. Uh, for our Coon chapter, which is one of the uh, predecessor lodges that uh, were involved in the merger, uh, they had an X1 and an X2, where the X2 had to be earned. Um, so you're talking this was pretty much limited to chapter officers or those chapter members that were super involved. Um, I don't have a list of the specific requirements, but you do not see this very often. Um, and once these ran out, uh, they reissued the patch in a twill background. Um, the quality is not quite there, um, but you have a green cut edge triangle. And then with a twill background, there was a gold mylar cut edge um, as well for the earned version. And uh, that's a need for me. I don't have it. And then finally on the far right there, uh, at some point they, they reordered again. It's, um, it's a twill triangle, but it's a little taller now and it has a rolled edge. And um, I don't believe uh, that a gold mylar version of the far right uh, patch there has been issued. I think they're still issuing that, uh, that mylar patch in the middle. 
so moving on to Chief Pomparag chapter, Chief Pomparag had been one of uh, Tenkatihi's uh, ancestor lodges, and they formed a chapter here. And uh, they had a yellow border chapter patch for their members, and they had a silver border uh, chapter patch that their um, members could earn, their, uh, you know, their chapter e board could earn. And then over on the right there, there was a unique version of that patch with a red mylar border. And that was worn and handed down by the chapter chiefs of that, uh, of that chapter. So it is uh, known or believed to be unique and I think is currently now in the collection of the, uh, the last chapter advisor of that chapter. So just a one-off, not likely to turn up at a tradery. Um, so after that design, they came up with this design and they had the red border for their members. They had the silver border uh, that they could earn. Um, and for this one, I believe there's also a red mylar border version that was handed down from the uh, chapter chief to chapter chief as well. Um, I don't have that picture here, but um, that's uh, that's the story there. And then they changed their design again. So um, moving on, they have this black border for members. They have the gold mylar border for the uh, that could be earned. And then you had the red mylar border for the chapter chief. And again, it was handed down. Um, it wasn't like issued one per chapter chief or anything like that. Um, looking through my collection and photographing things for this presentation, it turns out I need all of these. Uh, so if anyone out there in the world um, is a member of Chief Pomparag chapter and has any of these patches, I'd be very interested in adding them to my collection. And then um, we have more events. So uh, this chapter would help out at, at different um, district events. Um, it's hard to see here, but Chief Pomparag chapter is actually ghosted into the patches. So yes, it was a district um, district event, but the chapter was important enough to that event to have their names ghosted into the background. And there was the participant version and the staff version. And then down here, so that was uh, 2003 and 2005. Again, something very um, similar, a, a district string, spring camporee, but Chief Pomparod chapter either running or supporting it. And uh, there's this kind of grayish brown border. Uh, and then there was a red border issued to staff and staff is actually ghosted into, um, into the background here, kind of above the fire. Uh, and then finally, here's another uh, another Pomparag district event. And again, uh, the chapter name is uh, ghosted into the background there as well. Um, so moving on to Key Waden, um, they had a black border for their members, and then they had a yellow border that could be earned. Um, pretty difficult. So I need uh, the yellow one myself. Haven't been able to pick that up. Um, pretty tough. These are the only issues that that chapter uh, had issued. Uh, Owen Oak, which is a is an old old name, Tenkatiki 313, is uh, you know one of those old lodges formed in the wave of mergers in 1972, and their chapter had a dance team, and this was their chapter dance team patch. Um, so fairly. It's collectible both as a chapter patch and as a um, as a dance team patch, and it's pretty um, pretty scarce. Mine's used, and everyone I've ever seen was used because they were sewn on jackets. Uh, moving on to Pequot, um, their very first patch was this funny little triangle patch. Um, pretty small, pretty scarce. Um, I haven't seen one of these turn up in, in at least 25 years. Um, this newer version that they came out with, computers designed purple border is, is a bit more common. Um, and then after that, so these were issued, you can see the hoop of the universe in the middle, which was the totem of Tenkatiki 313. 
And then this chapter actually survived the next merger, carried over into OENECO 313. They had a black border um, that any uh, chapter member could acquire. And then they had the gold mylar border that had to be earned. And then we'll take a look at Powahai chapter. And again, Powahe, this Powahai chapter existed uh, at the time of Tankatiki Lodge 313. Um, there was uh, this original dome, the X1. Um, and then apparently this chapter fell apart and reorganized and they came back as the new Powahai chapter of Tankatiki 313. Both of these are exceptionally scarce. Uh, it wasn't a very big chapter. But it did carry over to the new lodge. So um, Powerhay chapters um, first, and these are not exactly to scale, but they're close. So their first rolled edge chapter patch was a little smaller than these others, um, maybe maybe two and a half, two and three quarter inch round, as opposed to like a three three and a half inch round. Um, first one has a black rolled edge. Then they came out with this um, cut edge. And then the earned version of this, instead of adding a mylar border, they went ahead and ghosted the background in the center. Um, and that's one that I need. Again, the earned ones tend to be quite a bit scarcer um, than the ones that people in the chapter can just buy. And I put this one on its, uh, on its own page. Uh, this was one of national stock designs that anybody could use. I mean, my, my summer camp used this stock design for, for one season, um, ignoring the fact that it was kind of the uh, BOA Indian in the clouds. Um, you could order anything you wanted on these minimum order six. Um, I am, however, you know, the people who ordered them had to go through their council office. So I am surprised that whoever ordered this, if they weren't authorized to order it, got it through. But I've heard a lot of chatter um, that this patch was unofficial. Um, so I've, I've put it here on its own page. Um, I don't have it. Um, if someone really did just go and make six of them or 12 of them or whatever it happened to be, uh, there can't be too many of these floating around. And so moving on, uh, Saginaw chapter, again, Tankatiki 313. Uh, so it's in the 1972, I think this patch came out in the uh, mid 1980s or so. Um, it's the only issue that this chapter um, put out. Um, so if you get it, you're, you're complete there. Here's another one that while they were in Tangatiki 313, they issued only this one patch. Uh, it was Scatacook chapter 313, though it has the... Um, they had the Mauihu Lodge uh, totem for their totem. Um, they were celebrating this 1946 was really in reference to the Mauihu Lodge because that chapter couldn't have formed before 1972. Um, again, the only patch that this chapter issued while uh, in Tangatiki Lodge. But again, it carried over to the new lodge, Owinico 313. Um, and like the other chapters, they had a basic version that their members could buy. And they had this white uh, bordered version that had to be earned. And so this white border version is quite difficult. Um, it's another one that I don't have in my collection. Uh, and then uh, some Skatakut chapter events. So they um, had um, hosted or sponsored a fall haunted camporee uh, for Skedegut District. They have the uh, the sash draped across the pumpkin to uh, symbolize their involvement. And there was just the participant version and the staff version. Um, these weren't terribly difficult. And then more recently, they had a land party fellowship patch. Um, I can't quite read the date on that one, but it's um, it's fairly recent. Guantanamo chapter of Arcoon Lodge. Um, Arcoon wasn't that big of a lodge, uh, but they have a surprising number of chapters. Uh, Tontonimo was one of them. Again, this patch dates, I remember it turning up in probably the early 90s. Um, haven't seen it since. It's the only thing that this chapter uh, uh, issued under this name. 
Uh, and then Weepawog, and you can tell from the construction of this patch that it's a bit older. It's on heavy twill. It's, um, you know, Swiss embroidered. Uh, one of these turned up on eBay just a couple months ago, and it uh, it did surprisingly well. Um, I am aware that there are twill varieties. So this is a very heavy twill right, but there also exists a very fine twill left. Um, something I know about, I would, I would add it to my collection if I came across it. Uh, but this is this and, and a minor variety of this are the only patches issued by this chapter as well. And then we have Wangunk's chapter and Wangunk's 274 had been a lodge that was absorbed by Arkoon 369. Um, I believe that was 1978. And um, so that lodge got absorbed and they formed a chapter. And I'm sure they you know, operated independently of the lodge for some period of time as was common among some of the others. Um, this is a pretty tough patch. Um, you know, I've seen them sell two, $300. Um, and then I just have this black and white version because I know Rob Cutts was gonna mention it after the uh, presentation. Um, again, the lettering is all, if you have two of these, you're gonna find that they're different. The lettering was all done um, on hand looms by, you know, Chinese machine operators that don't speak English. And here's a case, there is at least one known example where instead of a G, they uh, embroidered an S. And um, so it's one sunks instead of one gunks. Um, again, this is the only patch that that chapter issued um, in its lifetime. Uh, and then they had Woolahan chapter. And Woolahan Chapter 369 had a red border for their members. They had a gray border that um, was either um, chapter officers or, or could be earned. Um, not 100% clear on that, but this, um, this gray bordered one is quite difficult. I've only seen one or two uh, in my 45 years of collecting. Um, but what was very common um, was this error that was floating around. It was quite, um, quite common in the uh, early to mid 1990s, apparently, you know, the, uh, the company made it messed up. They put 396 instead of 369 and uh, must have dumped, you know, must have dumped their overruns or their leftovers. Um, they were quite common for a period of time. And that's Woolahan chapter. Um, so that's all of Connecticut. And I had just a, you know, a few odds and ends that I didn't include in my last presentation. Um, there were these two chapters that issued coffee mugs. Um, this Kachipiani chapter one dates to the mid 1980s. This Kuda Wee 276 coffee mug for that chapter uh, dates to the late 1970s. Um, both are fairly obscure, though I found the Kuda Wee 2 mug exceptionally challenging to track down. And so I'll just leave off with just a quick list of some of the things that I don't have that I would I would love to find. The El Jixon chapter pin and this odd jacket patch are the only El Jixon issues that we know of um, that I don't have. Um, Corsair chapter is a brand new chapter that formed within the last year. This is their current patch, uh, that gray or white border, Wulahan earned patch uh, is also very difficult. Um, and most of the earned borders of the current Oweniko chapters are needs for me. I just, uh, I got these guys on a slide, but there are many other of these special borders um, that I do still need for my collection. And then finally, a few odds and ends. I don't have the Powahe. Don't know if it's official. Um, and then there are two other chapter event patches that actually didn't make it into my last presentation and uh, excuse the, uh, the quality of the images. Um, they're, they're pretty poor. Um, but Kiatan chapter, uh, hosted a merit badge midway in 1989, um, and that's a patch that I don't have for Kitan chapter for um, Nathan Hill District. Uh, Kitan chapter they did a series of four inches four inch rounds 
um, in 93, 94, 95, and I do need the 1995 OA Klondike Derby sponsored by Kitan Chapter. Um, this is a four inch round if you run across it. And then finally, um, just one, uh, possibly one of the toughest chapters in all of New England, um, the Kuda We Too. I showed a few different varieties. Um, it's pretty clear from these images that they had ordeal brotherhood and this really grainy image is a vigil version that i caught out of the corner of my eye in some ebay lot many years ago so it's a horrible image but it's pretty clear that there is a vigil honor version of that patch that exists the patches in my collection have two florida leaves but there are these odd variants with a 75 in place of the second florida lee i don't know if those happen to be like a a charter member or founding year designation or what those were, but um, I'd like to pick up uh, any of these with a with a gold 75 to the right of the 76 and any version of the Vigil Honor for, uh, for my collection. And I'm highly motivated to pick these up. And that's it. And, um, you know, with Connecticut in the books, I can cover all of New England, all the rest of New England in one presentation next time.